Srinivasan sir, who is um, uh, Srini, uh, Sri Kumar Srinivasan sir is a vice president and general manager at Honeywell, Houston, Texas, United States. Having more than 28 years of experience at Honeywell, started with a kind of um, background in Bachelor of Engineering, as well as MBA from Jones Graduate School of Business with strategy and human resource, finance as well. Have headed various verticals around the, across the world, especially from the marketing, product management, and quality control and so on. Worked as PMC Americas, GM at PMC Americas, Director of uh, Growth Programs at United States, Product Line GM at United States, Regional Sales at Dubai, Global Marketing and Business Development Leader at United Kingdom, and so on. His credentials, we could see it in the, on the screens um, Sarah has shared. Without further delay, we wanted to have much time from our expert today. Srini, sir, more than that, he, have a, he has a passion towards the youth of um, the world, especially us, that India he wants to support us and help us. We could see that when he traveled and, we, and he was in our campus. And I would like to register our gratitude to our chairman, engineer Sugumaran, sir, for um, the support and all these contacts he has brought in for us. And once again, um, uh, we, we invite our chairman to say a few words and invite officially our chief guest today. Then after that, we'll officially start the session. Sir, it's over to you, sir. Sir, very good morning, uh, sir. Very good morning. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, support to our student. Thank you. Thank thanks, you very sir. much. Thanks, I sir. hope. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity, Sukumar. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It is a great, great help for our students to learn uh, to be from the top level of like you to deliver this uh, the speech about the uh, subject. Thank you very much, sir. I really uh, have me heartfully thankful to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, no my, my dear students, yeah. I hope you uh, you will really attend the session very well. You will get a better knowledge from the top people. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You can imagine, okay, you know, the, the people, top people are in the world and including our chairman has started at eight o'clock in the morning, you know. We shouldn't be working with timelines. We have to work without time boundaries in future. So we will have a lot of sessions like this. Um, with that, thank you so much, sir, Chairman, sir, for joining and gracing and opening up this occasion. Okay. I would like Please to leave this session to Srinivasan, sir, to start up now. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sukumar, and thank you, sir, uh, for this opportunity. So, uh, yes, yeah, so I think... Uh, you know, uh, I do this uh, sessions, but I try to keep it very light, right? I mean, it, it should be very simple. They say when you have when you do things very simple, it's easy to uh, easy to absorb, and when you absorb it, then it is you know, uh, it's it remains throughout your life, right? Uh, and that's how our mother and father teaches us. They teach us very simple stuff, and that is how we remember throughout life. So I'll try to keep it very simple. I try to keep some humor also, right? Uh, this is not a serious stuff. Uh, you know, let's learn from each other. Uh, the one thing uh, is uh, please be open, ask questions. Uh, you know, the more than 30 minutes of the one hour, I'll be focused on question and answer. So, you know, please be open and ask questions. Um, whatever I talk, I will be talking from an industry perspective, right? Um, how do we from industry look at things, uh, you know, whatever subject we are talking about, subject could be on strategy, subject could be on communication, you know, subject could be on HR, on behaviors, anything like that. And uh, I think soft skills, uh, you know, presentation skills, etc. I think what I will, you know, be able to share with you all is how we from the industry look at it. Um, I run a, a global business. It's about a billion dollar business uh, for Honeywell. Um, and uh, uh, I think I've you know, lived in almost uh, you know, every uh, part of the world, which are very important for gathering the cultural uh, you know, knowledge and the business knowledge of various uh, you know, uh, human uh, resource, because it's very important to also relate with uh, you know, the culture of each uh, country or the each region when you do a global business. Um, I have two sons. Uh, uh, my wife uh, is from basically from Dindical, right? Um, my children studied in seven schools. So you can imagine the amount of you know, traveling I've done or lived in various countries. Of course, I have a pet, uh, you know, Prince. Uh, that's it, that's from my personal side. 
what i will do today is uh, quickly cover about something about strategy i saw that strategy is one important part of your curriculum um, but there are many things in strategy so I, i will cover one particular aspect of strategy strategy itself is like a 3 4 months of you know classes so uh, you know i can't do that in 10 minutes time but what i will do is give some basics that you will never forget in your life okay so uh, you know that i will i will do in the next 10 minutes i will talk about how important you know is performance important or behavior important in corporate life right uh, it's a very touchy subject a lot of people think i need to go and do great and bring excellent results and you know bring profit for the company and that's what i am here for let's figure it out you know what's important and how the corporate life you know how corporate com uh, companies have started looking at it and finally about your you know business school itself you know uh, why am i saying that when practice what you learn i'll give you some examples in real life and you will understand why i'm saying that and then finally q and a let's go to strategy i'm sure you all know the word strategy where it came from uh, anybody on the call who knows where where it came from anyone come on don't be shy that's all that height so if you want you shouldn't be shy anyway strategy came from i will be asking questions like that so you know be ready if you are joining my class i will expect a two way communication rather than a monotonous discussion so please be open doesn't matter even if it is there is no uh, wrong answer absolutely no whatever you answer it's another perspective i will also learn so please be open and you know answer some of my questions as i go along so strategy came from a, a, it's a greek word called strategia right and uh, st strategia is uh, you know it 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 used to be the plan that a troop leader or a general or a you know a, a army commander used to lay and define to their Uh, to the soldiers right uh, it's basically it, it, the greek uh, uh, meaning is art of the general the art of the general that's what the meaning is right so when you go into uh, a war right what happens you come back victorious means you come back alive or you come back you you fail we means you die okay so you have only two options right nowadays in our world of you know corporate world we fail something we get another chance but when you go to war when you fail you die that's how important strategies are okay just just understand that's how important strategies are that's how the word strategy came it came from situations where you are either dead or you are alive you come out victorious okay the so that's the important thing you need to learn about how you know how strategy is you know a part of daily life and how critical it is for us to understand what strategy is and be very tactical about it it's not a joke right uh, so uh, you do a wrong strategy and you have a problem anyway so let's uh, let's understand this you all have heard about the turtle and the hare story if anybody has heard about it please tell me your version what did you, what do you think of what is the story here i i need the answer in within a minute so quick anybody just unmute yourself and speak thank you chanti no just tell the story what is the story i'm sure uh, your mother grandmother has taught you the story so what what is the story don't be shy come on this is a simple story right yeah you can unmute and tell students you want you to speak what happened very shy class it's a simple story i'm sure your grandmothers and mothers have taught you this sundar everyone is sleeping uh, or still attending uh, the class yes they are in class <laughs> sir actually uh, first time you know i think you can uh, talk to srini sir she's so friendly person yeah okay. just go ahead and guys and speak to him freely i, I really need a volunteer i need a volunteer here come on yeah. 
who is the volunteer just open up you I heard think, this uh, story sundar sir, sundar sir you should uh, you should you know give some extra points for whoever opens up we'll do then sir we'll we'll you should, all, usually we do it, sir. usually we do it sir. yeah i thought we all try to mark yeah. yeah now you can see that when they speak about points they will talk now you can see sir yeah. sir it's a race a race between the rabbit and the turtle uh, they raced yeah. for uh, in a line uh, but uh, the rabbit got uh, some fright so it sleep uh, and the turtle uh, turtle uh, hard worked and uh, uh, still uh, still in the race uh, and the turtle uh, win uh, rabbit uh, lost correct so uh, and uh, please i mean you know you, you uh, so uh, it's very simple right uh, turtle and the rabbit goes for a race you know uh, rabbit is very quick right it's very fast and uh, turtle is very slow and rabbit like was very close to the finish line and it was like what the hell you know let me sleep for a time for some time right uh, anyway i'm going to win the race you know he sleeps he forgets to wait, you know wake up on time by the time tortoise was you know slowly 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 catching up and it uh, you know it won the race so uh, you know what is the rabbit now learn what do you think after it lo lost the race what did the rabbit learn anybody again please open up what do you think the rabbit learned come on give me some confidence give me some. less sorry yes ganpati over confidence will kill us absolutely absolutely what else very good come on there's a lot of never, learning out of never under never underestimate the weak opponent very good never underestimate your opponent yes absolutely Anything not else? to judge a book by its cover sir absolutely that again never underestimate yeah it's correct don't judge your yeah it's also about his own ability right you know the rabbit also learned that i'm fast but sometimes i become complacent and i'm lazy right you know that so it's like learning that what we call in corporate world called self aware right so you need to be very very self aware about yourself okay so you you need to understand everything is not everybody else's fault right you need to first understand what is your strength what is your weakness and then work around that right tortoise didn't know tortoise thought it lost the race but it decided okay let me go slow and complete the race it didn't learn anything right it just learned that if if opponent is lazy then i can win right but the rabbit learned a lot right now just imagine the next day the tortoise again meets the rabbit and says hey let's race once more time let's do this once more because i like winning right so the so the turtle the tortoise went to the rabbit and said i want to race again right so what do you think now will happen what will happen to the next race who is going to win rabbit rabbit sir yeah the rabbit is expected to win okay but the turtle wins again so what happened so why do you think the turtle again won the the rabbit understands its weakness and strength now the rabbit knows bloody shit i shouldn't be going and sleeping i am so fast that i can finish the race in a minute right the the tortoise is going to take 10 minutes but still the turtle win why what happened what do you think again think wide open up your mind give me some advice what happened what would have happened sir maybe confidence become over confident but he, he knows no he knows that i shouldn't be over confident he knows very well now it might have used some strategy 
Yeah, so I agree. So that's okay. So I'm trying to teach you a strategy and you're telling me that it's using a strategy, but what? <laughs> Sir, across uh, this the race road, there are river, some river is there. Yeah. So turtle can swim and rabbit cannot. So that's it. So basically, the tortoise decided to change the rule of the game. Right? So it decided that I will now change the rule of the game, only then I can win. And that's basically what strategy is all about. Okay. So strategy is all about, you know, understanding what can you do different. Please mute. What can you do different using your own resources? Right, the rabbit, the tortoise knows it's slow, but the tortoise knew that it knows how to swim, and the competition doesn't know how to swim. It knows that, so it uses its resources. It sees a path which where there is a river. So again, it uses its resources, right, and then executes it well to win. Again, I said you know strategy comes from a Greek word which is used for winning wars, right? So mm -hmm. strategy is al always about winning. Strategy mm -hmm. is always about differentiating. Mm -hmm. And strategy is always about using your resources. This is how simple strategy is. There is nothing more in strategy. But to do this, it's very difficult. There are multiple reasons on why we mess up doing strategy and I can take that as a separate lesson, uh, you know, uh, on why, if, if it is so simple, why people mess up, why, you know, 80%, 90% of strategies fail, right? Uh, I can take that as a separate lesson, but this is how simple it is. Have you heard of this company called Nokia? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm sure a lot of yeah. So I don't know if you know, they were actually a paper mill. They were, you know, a paper mill. You know, they used to make paper. They transformed themselves to be one of the global leaders in telecom. I mean, the, that's transformation, right? Look at the transformation they went through. It's like, you know, producing paper to going to, to you know, becoming a global leader in telecom in 2011. So we all should be, you know, I went to Nokia in 1999, you know, and I was on my way to uh, Warakos in Finland. And I was amazed to see their technology and, you know, facilities. And it was mind blowing. And when they shared that they became, uh, they moved from a pulp mill because, you know, Warakos is the pulp mill. And I was like, um, how can people transform like that, right? But what happened, right? Apple, so the first phone of Nokia was launched in 1992, and the first phone of Apple was launched in 2007. Nokia is a $22 billion company today. Apple is a $365 billion company today, right? So, you know, that's how, that's how the difference is. Why? Because Apple decided to change the rules of the game. Nokia invented a phone. They came out with a phone to talk. What did I, Apple do? Apple decided, no, I'm going to come out with a phone, but it's going to do much more for people in everyday life. Right? So they created the iOS and then came out with the iPhone. So that's how, you know, a so one part of strategy you will learn is called a strategic innovation. And it's very important for you to, you know, go into that subject because strategic innovation is something that is disruptive. There is a market leader. You are entering late. The market leader has huge share in the market. But now, how do I come out with a clear strategy which will disrupt the market and I displace the leader and become number one? That's basically what Apple did to Nokia. 
there are a lot of such you know examples that you can talk about so we we know what happened to for example you know um tush uh, 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 you know the camera world itself right the films were dominated by kodak and then what happened right so there are many such uh, case, you know uh, examples another one is marriott have you all heard about marriott i'm sure right you have, i'm sure many of you have lived there or you know it's a it's a great it's one of the best uh, hotel chains globally right um and they were nothing but a bar i mean you can imagine in 1927 and uh, you know they were they started off like a beer bar again they just went and transformed themselves into such a massive global you know hotel chain and uh, you know it's very interesting so i think you should google you know their ceo now the ceo died in 2021 but he became the ceo in 2011 and uh, in 2012 in one of the press conference uh, you know they were so from 2011 onwards 2011 to 2021 they have been in the 13.5 to 14 billion range of revenue so they have not been growing they are flat right so they are just not growing normally we expect companies to grow from 13 billion to 13.5 to 14 to 14.5 15 15.5 16 that's what we expect companies to grow right everybody wants to grow in life but these guys were just not able to grow and if you look at all his interviews it's all about market is saturated you know people uh, you know uh, people don't want to spend the rates are coming down blah 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 lots of you know there's no new market uh everywhere already we have hotels blah 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 there's a lot of justification on why they are not able to grow so again please go through you know of marriott was from 2011 to 2021 one of the best companies a great company to work for a great you know you should respect this company i can tell you that i mean i, I have known a lot of people lot of executives in marriott and it's a world class company right it's a great i mean become from a beer bar owner becoming a you know global chain for 14 billion dollars it's a massive thing but what happened airbnb launched in 2008 and today they are already 6 billion dollars marriott thought there's no market right oh that's it it's saturated everything we have done we have gone every part of the world we have gone and met with every customer so that's it the market is that that's it you know but look at what uh, airbnb has done airbnb has grown from 0 to 6 billion dollars in a market which the top tier companies like marriott and you know uh, all, all these big uh, companies like hilton they all think it's saturated they just come and make 6 billion dollars you know uh, revenue and i can i can tell you right away that in another 10 years time they're going to be much bigger than any other company so the 100 150 years of marriotts and the hiltons right there's going to be disturbed in just 20 years of you know airbnb's time in fact much i i would think it'll be much earlier but let's see right they're already 6 billion last year so the, again what did they do they changed the rules of the game right so that's that's what is very important when you you know think about strategy strategy is about winning they always remember that strategy when you when you decide to execute a strategy it's either you are you come victorious or you fail olden die, olden days it was you 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 know you come alive or you die right that's how important strategy was that so seriously people think strategy is all about differentiation right and strategy is about what resources you have you can't dream and create a strategy right there is, you can't do that you have limited resources you have limited people you have limited money you have limited equipment you you have limited information you have to create that a strategy so that you can use these resources and create a differentiation for winning so it's it's not it's not easy 
So, uh, you know, keep reading books, but, uh, you know, that, that's the critical thing about strategy and strategic innovation. Um, yeah, that was my first session. I hope it was useful. You know, um, uh, that's why I said I will, I will do very simple stuff uh, because I want to, you know, uh, bring the industry knowledge into the schools. But, you, you know, until you have exposure to industry, it's very difficult. If I start talking at very high levels and, you know, talk the typical, you know, uh, strategy that I do to my chairman and things like that. I mean, you will just not understand it. So, I, but this is exactly what you need even when you go to an industry, right? The second thing I, I talked about is performance uh, versus behavior in corporate life. Perf performance is critical. So as soon as you get to get into a job, you know, uh, even take Sukuman's case, he will review with his, you know, his, uh, I'm sure Sundar and everybody is, is pressurized on hey are you you know are you running the business well is the school performing great is the MBA you know um, course recognized in India right uh, how are corporate looking at this of course these things are there right there's no question about that so there will be always uh, the importance of evaluating performance which what we call as you know achievements or GNO goals and objectives right but behaviors are becoming, I would say, more important in companies like Honeywell and at least equally important globally, right? Take any other company, behaviors are very important. So always pay equal attention to your behaviors. And that needs to, behaviors are not easy to change. I'm sure your mom and dad have, you know, told you 10 times about one thing that you never change right? Don't wash your clothes on time, right? I mean, you know, uh, going out at night and watching movies, blah, blah, blah. You, you, know, you always do it. That's it. Behaviors don't change, right? So you need to start, you know, looking at, and in corporate world, there are a lot of other behaviors which are very important, right? About teamwork, about jealousy, about inclusion, about diversity, you know, uh, about, there's so many other things that uh, the, you know, behaviors are very important. So Honeywell has its own nine behaviors, right? Uh, so you, you can go to internet and, you know, read them. Uh, these are something to do with, again, uh, teamwork, becoming a mentor, you know, a uh, lot of, uh, you know, inclusion, uh, being quick, thinking out of the box, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you, you can read this, this, you know, every company has its own behavior, okay? And, the reason they said this behavior is because they will evaluate you on how you do while you achieve your targets. How have you done on these behaviors? And this is the way we evaluate it, right? So this is the evaluation that we go through. So this is results. So there are people who exceed, exceed results. They are either one, two, three. They meet the results. So I wanted you to do 100, you have, you have met 100. Exceed results means I wanted you to do 100, you have done 110, great. And below standards, right? So I wanted you to do 100, you did 90, maybe 85 or 70. I've set certain rules on behavior, right? So how are you, are you exceeding standards on behaviors? Then you are in 147. You are meeting standards. You are in 258. And below standard, you're on 369, right? In behavior. So let's say you get rated four. That means you have met the standard of results. So I asked you to do 100. You have met 100. But in behaviors, you have done exceptionally well. I wanted you to achieve these behaviors. You know, I wanted you to share teamwork. I wanted you to be inclusive. I wanted you to be, you know, to embrace diversity, right? and you have done great work. So you are rated four. So the increments, the promotions, everything is, you know, is then respected than a person in five, right? But let's look at a person in three. I wanted you to do 100, you did 110. But then from a behavior standpoint, you were cool, right? Which means you didn't, you didn't have teamwork. You created problem for others. So you actually created a productivity issue of others. So you may have done 10 more, but because of your behavior, maybe the other person lost 15, right? 
So that means net net, you have actually created a problem for the company. These are the most dangerous people, right? The people who exceed behavior. Uh, uh, sorry, but mess up the behavior. Really, really worried about them. When I say worried in corporate world, it means something else, right? That means they don't exist in the company. We don't like. Okay, so uh, you know, so of course we do give a chance, right? So we always speak to the people, give you know, give coaching, tell them where they are going wrong, give them a chance and improve. So you should never. This is how important behaviors are, and you know, go through. I'm sure as part of strategy class or MBA class, your professors and teachers will teach you about behaviors in corporate world. Take it seriously and practice it. because behaviors don't change until you practice remember that right you can't go with a bad behavior in industry industry is now looking for people with good behavior with mediocre performance it's fine performance wise we are we are tolerant because as a team the total team will perform well but if you have a bad behavior you don't fit the industry so that's how important behaviors are so that was the second you know uh, learning i wanted to give you because Uh, it's very important for you to change as you are in school the third important thing is in school you know many lectures we bunk we decide oh this the, in this course this is 30% so i'll attend that one that is 10% oh who cares right i won't attend that one there's a lot of things we do in school and colleges right remember one thing that whatever is taught to you in school is not a joke when curriculum is set it is set for a specific reason it's because they take industry feedback they give you know they 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 really understand what the basics is what the foundation is uh, you know it's all left to you on how you know how you learn in school and it's you know nobody is going to they say you can take the horse to the water but can't force to drink it right you can't force the you know horse to drink it so that's what everybody is doing the teachers are doing the parents are doing they you know and you yourself have enrolled in a school now you have to decide whether to learn or not but more important how to you know how to practice what you learn right i'll give you an example last week i had to do a porter's five forces for my job i'm 30 years 28 years experience guy i have done multiple strategies you know this is this is a day and day you know day in and day out of my life right i run a billion dollar company right but still i had to do a porter's five forces to understand how do i get into this industry and win the customer and you are going to learn this five porter's forces in your strategy course i don't know when maybe in first year or second year you already learned it right Th that's how it is that's how simple it is right i, I had to do it right and then the you know the importance of being an entrepreneur right you have to be an entrepreneur you have to think like an entrepreneur the company expects you to think like an entrepreneur you have to think that everything you do is your money that goes into that right and how will you spend your money so this is just a guidance right always think of, you know you you should have these three things in your mind one is tennis ball the, the it's like a dog i'm sure you know people who have pet you throw a tennis ball you can see how focused the dog is to go and get the tennis ball you can do you can give the dog a you know a bone it will not it will not change its focus it will continue to go and hit the tennis ball right so it's all about what is that you are obsessed with that's what the tennis ball represents right it's like the dog which goes after you know the tennis ball when you when you throw it then the circle circle represents your resources your friends your network you cannot win alone there is no way you can win alone it's all about the circle that you have right you have to decide which environment you have to you have to create creating an environment and being in an environment is your responsibility it is not somebody else's you can't go and tell a professor that you know uh, why didn't you connect why didn't you network there's enough of opportunities now for you to network with people so create your own circle create your own you know set of people and your resources so that you can uh, grow and then there is 30000 days it's 30000 days that people live nowadays just an average right so it's never late right but start and make 
every day count right so if you have you know the, the, the so these are the three basic stuff that we expect as an in an industry for you to behave like an entrepreneur we first want you to think that every money we spend in our company is your own money so when i make this call when i am talking to you i think what is the use of you know am i spending hanivel's money what is the benefit of hanivel is there a benefit for shri kumar is there a benefit for the students is there a benefit for the college right why am i why am i spending this money why am i spending this time you need to understand you know that and behave like an entrepreneur every time that's it that was what i had uh, you know so i would like to go for q and a again be open ask me any questions it could be related to these subjects or it could be not related to any of these subjects i come from an industry you know uh, i have multiple you know uh, functional knowledge i was in factory i was in uh, you know commissioning i was engineering uh, i was in uh, management you know uh, in marketing so i've done i'm a fi- mba in finance so don't worry about what again as i said no question is foolish either i learn that i don't know something so i will come back to you or if i know i will give you the industry perspective where i will you know explain it so please go ahead and ask questions uh i don't know sundar sir if you want to open it for questions or you have any comments yes, for that for students yeah that's really a great eye opening for our students sir especially the second year students they have started their strategic management recently we were talking about um, strategy means an action that attains superior performance in the co- co- competitive environment that's what the basic definition they have to understand and they see when looking at that particular scenario app uh, take nokia as your own case you have given to us like uh, 2001 i guess around the early 2000 they were the market leaders with 35 to 37 percentage of the wireless phone earlier we were all holding wired phones they think they are the rulers like the rabbit thought you know and they were uh, competitors were like ericsson and uh, they had like motorola they were the followers of um, nokia but they were nowhere near to nokia they were far away from nokia but all the sudden the industry life cycle of wireless phone has totally changed like walmart we take it like 100 over years they are still in the stagnant position it's moving up and you look at um, like this wireless phone it's only 10 to 15 years now iphone we don't know how long it's going to go the industry life cycle gets changed time to time and it's not permanent as people tell strategic document is not a closed rigid document it's an open document always you have to keep it open for edit edition and editing yeah. and amendments and so on and maybe your views on that sir fundamental uh, concepts for the students so, for so strategy you so in in our corporate world we revisit strategy every year okay so and we start we start from scratch we start from the market analysis the industry analysis right who is our competition what is the change in supplier you know world how is uh, you know the economy you know, what are the new trends everything is reviewed again so strategy as you rightly said you know is not a is not a, a permanent thing it's just a, uh, it's for today that's what strategy is about you you have to keep an eye on everything around you things change very quick and you can be just you know washed away in a storm just like that even without you know so uh, you're right i mean uh, i have very good cases on you know the walmart story uh, again yes. i can you know i can teach strategy with a walmart example as well i i could have done that but i didn't know how indian students will you know students yeah, we in were, india can we yeah. speak so much about international cases sir this nokia okay. walmart and these cases very much so walmart uh, yeah i can i can take a good lesson on walmart uh, but i think uh, the important you talked about is the s curve right so how yes, does the sir. product life how does the product life industry cycle life go cycle. industry life cycle goes on on the s curve so that's another important thing i think you know if you want to do a very simple exercise right and to just learn about it uh, we there used to be horse carts right before uh, that's how you know I, i think from mesopotamia in uh, somewhere in 1805 i think bc before christ that's when the horse cart was invented or you know formed and uh, you know so you can take that industry the horse cart industry and then you can take the automobile industry you know the cars right 
and it will be a good case for somebody to present you know on you know what what is you know what is the esco for the industry on car versus the industry of automobiles there's a lot of learning that you will get out of that simple stuff i think you can prepare this in half an hour but the amount of learning that you will get in that half an hour is something that probably you will spend 10 years in the industry to learn so uh, yeah go go that is the task into... uh, is given to the students sir recently there is a girl did on um, five force analysis for netflix there is one more candidate is doing for um, like uh, starbucks likewise everyone has to bring up a video documentary on netflix uh, the sorry the five, the tools strategic tools which they learn here with practical aspects really Very what good. you are giving that insight it adds real uh, add on to them what they are doing it today it's really great uh, session for us, uh, for our students, especially for the second years, I guess. First years, it's a good startup. And this the second one is your behavioral aspect, uh, very much important for them to take it up from the childhood, from the basic day. Behavior is so much um, taken into consideration. Not just only I win, that is enough. We have to make that unit win, that industry, and as well as the whole thing, we have to see that as a team player and as a leader, so much important. Then only you can aim to go for a CEO or top level position. That's the purpose of coming for MBA, not just merely holding a position and making ourselves individually win from the race. That is not the whole purpose. That's a real great insight uh, for us to learn, sir. Especially to me personally, I have um, got that picture. Thank you so much, sir. No problem. Let's let's go to question and answers. Anybody has any questions? From students, uh, yeah. Some simple questions also will do. Students, please go ahead. And, students, uh, teachers, uh, student yeah. teachers, professors, you know, uh, please go ahead. Anybody asking yeah. any question? Yeah. If you have network issues, you can type it so I can read it for you. No issues. Hello, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, so, you talked about the nine blocks. Uh, that you use to measure the performance and behavior. So uh, performance can be measured in numbers and all, but how in a corporate behavior will be measured so that it comes under uh, below standard or meet standard or exceed the standard, how it will be measured, the behavior, how will we measure in a corporate? So like, like there is, uh, you know, targets given for performance. Let's say you're a salesperson. So you, you know, you leave your, you, you know, Aditya School of Business, you have graduated and you go and join a sales in the sales department of a company. So you have said, okay, go and get two crores of, you know, uh, revenue, right? Or orders. So that's your target, right? And they can, as you rightly said, they can easily measure you with two crores, how much you got at the end of the year and decide it. But remember that similarly, they give you targets for behavior, right? So, so now the targets are like, for me, for example, right? At my level, I have targets for diversity, right? So uh, I need to ensure that, you know, um, you know uh, whether it's women or whether it's, uh, you know, whether it's, um, um, you know, blacks or whether it's, uh, you know, um, uh, Hispanic or whether it's uh, uh, people of color, um, uh, so the, the, that is this is the target that we have, and we we announce it in our results in you know in <coughs> the corporate world, right? So uh, you can see Honeywell's results, and uh, you know whenever we pub, uh, we we actually publicize this, it's part of our results. Like we share our uh, op, you know revenue and operating income, we share even how we do on our behaviors, right? Uh, similarly, teamwork, like, for example, what we call as upsell. So, how, you know, how, you brought in two crores, that's fine. But did you did you help your colleague bring 500, uh, you know, uh, 5 lakh of rupees, right? So, so you know, that's also about teamwork. And, uh, and each, each, of you, oh, each of the behaviors also has targets. So it's not that, you know, uh, behaviors cannot be measured. Behaviors can be measured. And uh, you will get targets uh, when you go to professional companies on behaviors. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So that is another question here, sir. We could see um, the factors you consider or uh, the determinants of uh, strategic planning. Usually we teach that five um, 
building blocks of strategic management, uh, superior in innovation, superior in efficiency, superior in customer responsiveness, and um, superior in, um, uh, what more we call it as what students, I, 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 it's gone out of my mind. And um, efficiency, innovation, customer responsiveness, and one more uh, building block, uh, quality, that four most important aspect. Four building blocks of strategic management, we speak so much, sir, in class. In your own way, in the real practice, how do you see this aspect? That's a question asked. So, so, so st strategic planning is different from strategic management. So are we answering strategic planning or are we answering strategic management? Here he's asking about strategic plan. Okay. So strategic planning is different. Strategic planning is, is about what is the strategic planning is about value to a specific segment of customer. It's not to everybody. It's to the value that you're offering. Again, it's not a product. Okay. That's why very important that you understand the words. If you use the word called product instead of offering, you made a mistake. In corporate world, it's like you don't understand what strategic planning is. Okay. So, so it's the value value that you're offering, right? So because offering could have products, services, software, it could have a lot of things, right? Uh, the value that you're offering brings to a specific segment of customer, okay? Because your product is designed for a specific segment of customer. The value is a dollar amount or a rupee amount. It's an absolute number, okay? For a specific segment of customer, right, which is which is um, incremental to your competition. So the value, when you say I, I, the benefit of you using my offering is five lakh of rupees. That should be an incremental value to your competition. That means how differentiated your value is with competition, right? So again, uh, the value is a dollar amount of offering, which is to a specific segment of customer versus competition, right? And you need to give proof points. You cannot say, oh, I'll come and show you this dream and then go. you need to give proof points, right? What is the proof? So always remember strategic planning finally is about a statement, right? There is a statement that every company gives out of that is the last you know i can share strategic plan of multiple businesses that i run or you know my colleagues run in honeywell it's always a statement which has dollar amount what is a specific you know a benefit to a specific segment of customers for the offering that we have versus competition and i i can prove it this way right now strategic planning is is about you know, then there is a process how we do the strategic planning. What I explained to you is the result, right? That's the result, okay? The process is understanding the industry, understanding your resources, understanding your strengths, understanding the needs of the customer. Remember there's again, need is a very important word, okay? What Apple, what Apple did to the industry was understanding well the need of the people. Right, the need of the people. Many people thought was a phone is used to communicate, right, to talk to each other. But Apple completely changed the definition of the need because when they spoke to customers, they said, "If this thing also, I could have seen people, uh, you know, I could if I can, I can see my son on the other side who is speaking to me. It would have been great." That's a need of the people, right? So Apple looked at it very differently. So always, you know, so we look at the need of the people, the competition, again, very specific segment that you want to, you know, go through. So yeah, strategic plan is a, uh, is a combination of all these things. And it's a, again, it's a completely different lesson by itself. And uh, yeah, um, it's another. It from the, yeah, sir. It's, it bases from the vision and mission of the company, basically, isn't it? So it has to start from there and work on the analysis and uh, move for, further. Yeah. Students, other questions? So I have always a curiosity thing, sir. In India, whenever we go to a company or talk to an employee, or even when you, in US, uh, I was there also sometimes in Singapore, 
they really understand the basic behind when you talk to an apple employee he says every dot everything whatever you wanted to make it it should speak about innovation that means that is the spirit of the company that vision of the company is inculcated and brought into every part and parcel of the company organization but take to normal organization around where we go for internships and so on their vision is totally taken out or so just mere statement it is not well addressed uh, to the stakeholders you know that's where this, uh, the, the leading top fortune 500 companies we can't see it much from asia or specifically from india we can't see much many yeah so your views is what so innovation no innovation is something that you know um, uh, innovation is something that you have to do every day so it is said that you know if you take the uh, you know the uh, top 100 uh, companies that are listed in, uh, in the new york stock exchange now it is said that more than 73% won't exist in 2027. So let's see. And uh, if you if you are taking the top 100 10 years back, you will see that 73, you know, almost 70% of people don't exist today, right? Yeah. And True, why why they have not been able to sustain is because of innovation. So it is again, you know, it's a it's a chin takes time. Innovation uh, is a big money spend, and only five percent of innovation is actually successful, right? So uh, there's a there's a always there are what we call as barriers to innovation, and every CEO, every leader, you know, uh, when you run a business like how I run a business, we have to dedicate all three important aspects for innovation. One is people, okay. Second is the money. I mean, without the money, what will the people do, right? You, you need to give them time. And third, most important is embrace failure, right? You need to give the people an ecosystem where they should be proud of what they have achieved, even if they have failed, right? There should be no fear for failure, right? So only then we will be able to create an ecosystem, a culture, of innovation. It's all about culture, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, Apple, of course, is a solid, you know, example of innovation. There's no doubt about how, you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I can take a very good story about Microsoft and Apple. Uh, whenever, you know, whenever you, next time, if, um, if the topic is about corporate rivalry and focus. So if you have a topic around corporate rivalry, then, you know, I can do Walmart. I can do, uh, I can do uh, Microsoft versus Apple. Uh, but yeah, I, at the point I'm saying is uh, you have to create the ecosystem. It is every leader's responsibility that you create an ecosystem with these three important aspects so that you can, uh, you know, you can um, inculcate innovation as part of your life. If you don't, you will die for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> That's really a good input, sir. Three areas which I have taken note. We'll research further on that. And I think we are coming to the time. You have another appointment at nine o'clock. Yeah, six minutes That's... more. So yeah. if you have anything, can go for else, one more maybe question. one more question. One more question yeah. from students. Can post it or quickly make it. First is yes, quiet. Any questions? Sir, uh, can I proceed? Yes, proceed, please. Okay, Good morning, sir. Uh, so I have a question on SWOT analysis, sir. When we take up industry, usually we just uh, a question arises at the first to our head is SWOT analysis. So what does uh, really help the industry in regarding the SWOT analysis, sir? So it's not only the industry, right? It's also you have to do, you know, uh, it's good for you to do a SWOT analysis about you as well, right? About So that's why we, you know, uh, the most, one of the behaviors that we really like, uh, whether it's a business, whether it's an industry, whether it's a peop, whether it's an individual is, is doing SWOT uh, analysis. That is to understand what is the strength? What is the weakness? What are the opportunities? What are the threats? Right. Even I have my weaknesses, right? I have my opportunities. You know, I'm very good in, uh, you know, uh, say maths, for example, right? 
So, uh, you know, uh, I can think very quick, right? Uh, I have my, um, you know, threads as well, right? I mean, so it's very good. So it's not only about the industry itself. So what always is about self-aware. Please be self-aware about yourself, about the industry, about your, you know, college that you are uh, studying today. You should be a self-aware because only when you are self-aware, you will know how to mitigate it, right? Or take advantage of it. So how do, how do I take the strengths and become and double the you know double upon it to to be successful how do i understand my weakness and ensure that i have a mitigation plan around the weakness how i how how can i look at opportunities to you know uh, of grow my company further or grow myself further and of course threats how do i ensure that i don't allow the threats near me or i create a plan always to stay ahead of threats so SWOT analysis is about self, self-aware. That is whether it's an industry, whether it's a company, whether it's an individual, uh, it's a basic, right? It's like integrity. Uh, you know, there is integrity being honest, uh, not doing, uh, you know, um, not being corrupt, uh, doing the right thing. These are all integrity. These are not behaviors that a company expects you to, uh, you know, uh, to meet. If you don't, you, you don't even exist in the company, right? So these are, uh, so self aware is one of them. You must know, uh, you know, your strength, weakness, opportunity, and threat, because that's the only way you can be successful. Thank you, sir. That's a great insight uh, for us, especially to know that the inherent abilities and inabilities and the external challenges, how you can overcome the challenges. Um, that's the whole purpose of doing SWOT. I think the first years are given the task to do and come back. Let's say they want to get some clarity from you. So I think they are doing it by now. So, so Thank let you them so do much, about yeah. themselves also, yeah. right? Let yes, them sir, do yeah, it yeah. about themselves also. So, you know, there is something called as IDP, right? Individual Development yes. Plan. So yes, they can yes, create yes. IDPs based on the SWOT analysis that they do about themselves. Yeah. Exactly. They have a notebook. Actually, they started first year's IDP, Individual Development Notebook. They have Personality Development Notebook, we call it, sir. So they have to do self SWOT now, actually. That's their first task is given. They haven't started classes. They are expecting soon in a week after puja holidays. So they'll have to bring it and present it about them. So we'll plan it accordingly by individuals. So this is a good input uh, insights for them, sir, actually. Thank you so much, sir. That's a great um, Sunday uh, uh, for you and a great Sunday as a Monday beginning for us. And it's really great time and for our students, first years and second years. I could see the maximum limit only 100. All hundreds have come and attended this today's session. Really, really great session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So we'll meet up so thank soon in another thank session. You, and, uh, thank you, and uh, I think. Yeah, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I also yeah. attend the uh, good class for me also. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sir. We'll meet next time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, you thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Srini, sir. And thank you, sir, our chairman. For, uh, thank, you. For thank, you, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, students. Come back to class shortly. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, first years, you can exit. Second years, come by 9.30, okay, to class. <laughs>